Okay. I look at this picture, I'm like, oh, geez, that's crazy talk. So I'm bringing back this picture because I want you to be reminded of how did we end up with fluid that we are ultimately going to dump into the lymphatic system. And again, the whole reason is that we have more filtration, three liters of fluid every day that's filtered out of your blood just in your capillaries. And I want you to think about some factors that might change how much fluid is filtered out. The only thing that prevents basically all your blood volume from being filtered out is the presence of these plasma proteins. So you can imagine that if we had some kind of condition that wonkified the plasma protein concentration in your blood, then you're going to have issues with swelling. You're going to, and swelling that happens as a result of not being able to reabsorb your fluid, that's called edema. And there's a million reasons why you can end up with edema. High blood pressure increases hydrostatic pressure, which pushes more fluid out. That can result in swelling or edema. Starvation, low protein diet means that you don't have the plasma, you don't have the protein to make the plasma proteins in your blood, which means you don't have as much pull, osmotic pressure, to bring the water back into your bloodstream. And that means that more of it's going to end up in your um, interstitial spaces leading to swelling. The, the situation of kwashiorkor, which is the little starving babies in, when they are starving and their little bellies swell, that's, their bellies are swelling because the fluid, they, they haven't eaten enough protein, they're starving, they haven't eaten enough protein to pull the fluid back into their bloodstream. So they're probably super thirsty and they drink and they drink and they drink, but all that fluid goes out into their tissues and in particular into their abdomens, which is why you end up with that swelling. So where do we dump it? We dump it into the lymphatic system. If you don't want to swell, you have to dump it into the lymphatic system. And this is crazy. I feel like, dude, the lymphatic system gets the shaft in an anatomy and physiology class because really, I mean, it's really cool. It's like this whole network of vessels. We focus in on, oh, how awesome is the cardiovascular system with its network of vessels, but the lymphatic system is a network of vessels. And you're dumping, or it's, it's a passive process. It, the, the lumen of the lymphatic vessels is kind of a low pressure zone, and there's lots of reasons for that. So the fluid just flows easily into the lymph vessels. They pick up, look at how they're related to the capillaries. Here are my cap, here's my capillary bed. Here are my lymph vessels that just reabsorb the fluid that gets dumped out or pushed out by hydrostatic pressure. The lymph vessels have valves, just like veins have valves to prevent backflow. So do lymph vessels. And your skeletal muscle, there, there isn't a pump. There's no heart. Maybe that's why the lymphatic system isn't nearly as cool, but it includes the spleen, which I'd argue, dude, the spleen is amazing. So you, your skeletal muscles actually will push the fluid through your lymphatic system. Ultimately, it dumps, all that fluid gets dumped back into your cardiovascular system up by your clavicles. Hmm. Is there anything else that you need to know? Oh, my gosh, that was really exciting to get that lecture recorded. Okay, you guys are awesome, and don't swell. Bye-bye.